Hello everyone, it's Darby River Ben Survival. Um, as I posted on a previous video, uh, I had surgery, so I've been gone for a little bit. I had a little minor setback, but the doctor finally released me yesterday on Friday the 13th. Go figure. Now it's a good luck day for me. Um, upon getting home from the doctor's office, uh, I finished up on a project that I had started that I did not do a video series on because uh, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. Um, last night, um, me and my oldest son, Asher, well, he's my only son, my oldest one, we moved the uh, project to the backyard. That was a bit of a, a chore going through the garages and such with it. Um, and then later last night, my friend Steven that you've met on some previous videos, he brought over the new occupants for it. Let me get the camera reset, and then I'll show you what I did. Be right back. The latest project that I've been working on recently, well, it actually took me a couple of months to get it done because I would start on it and stop and then restart again, um, is behind me. It's my new chicken tractor. It's the first one that I built, and to be perfectly honest with you, I overbuilt it. Uh, it's heavier than it should be. It makes it a little bit harder to move, but that's all right. Uh, let me step out of the way here. I'll show you the whole thing and then I'll take you in for some of the details. Let's start with a couple of the uh, basic details of it. Uh, it's about six foot two, six foot three inches tall. It's four foot wide, it's eight foot long. The coop part itself is four foot by four foot. It has a shingled roof on it. Uh, it's got pressure treated plywood on top, and then the, the velvet felt, and then the shingles. And in between there is a layer of uh, very thick plastic that's between the felt and the shingles. Uh, I felt that was important because we do get hurricanes down here. Um, the coop, we're guessing, it's just purely a guess, we're guessing it weighs about four to 600 pounds, somewhere in there. Uh, I'll explain that weight here in a little bit. As I said, I really overbuilt it. This is the main access door to the coop itself for cleaning, um, removing things, repairing items. It has a, a standard gate latch on it. Uh, it opens all the way up. You can see, uh, maybe not, I'll zoom in here a little bit. It has crossed roosting bars up on top. Uh, once again, pressure treated floor. Uh, I'm using cedar chips right now. I'll probably switch to straw from the land. I don't know yet. Uh, a ton of room inside here. All the hardware on this unit is either stainless steel or marine grade brass. Due to the high temperatures that we have down here pretty much year round, uh, this is March 14th, and today it's supposed to be in the 80s. Uh, we, we just don't get cold very often down here. So the main concern for the chickens and the, and the coop part itself at night is temperature. So to try to help counteract that, on this side, on this corner here, and then on the opposite corner over there uh, are six two-inch holes. And I put this louver over the top to keep out rain, and this is the kind of uh, the... Um, has the anti-bug mesh, like window netting on the back of it uh, to stop any kind of insects from going in and out. But hopefully this will give a good cross draft through the, the roost to keep the heat out during the day or even at night. Uh, right here is the pool. Make sure no chickens on it. Right here is the pool for the, the ramp to get in and out. Uh, this thing just pulls down and there's a there's an uh, eye bolt down here and the stainless steel clip clips onto it and locks it in place to, to close the coop at night. Right here is the access door for reaching into the nesting boxes to remove eggs or to clean them. The nesting boxes, uh, it's just a simple lift latch. Lower it down, you have a shelf, and right inside here are the nesting boxes. I saw some videos with some people that had very nice coops. 
and they recommend it using plastic boxes because they're easier to clean up an egg breaks or you get the, the birds go to the bathroom in it. Um, right here you can see the back end of one of the the cross uh, roosting bars that are in there. Um, seems to be a good system. We just got them last night. There were no eggs this morning of course. Uh, but it's a very secure system. Locked up tight. Nothing's getting inside of there. This is the other side of the coop. Not a lot to show here. Uh, have another vent right here, the opposite corner. Uh, there's the, the wheel attachments. I'll show you how those work here in just a minute. Um, and there's the ramp right there that goes up and down into the coop. Matter of fact, first time I saw a chicken go back up it just now. Um, these are the pull handles. Uh, I say pull handles. It's just a handle that runs across the coop here to uh, when the wheels are up to, to push or pull the, the coop. Here's the side with the handle on it. You can see what I'm talking about right here. Uh, when the wheels are up to, to grab it and move it. Uh, it's just a, a basic waterer that I bought at Tractor Supply right there. And I'll show you the feeder here in a second. Uh, it's something that I made. I saw it online. Uh, not a ton to show you right here. This is how I access the front of the coop uh, for feeding and watering. Uh, once again, another stainless steel slide lock. Raise this up. Put the block in. I can reach right in. Take out the water. Or the feeder. This is the, the made at home feeder that I made. It's a piece of two inch pipe into a four inch cap. Uh, I put a couple little drain holes in the bottom in case water does get in here somehow, but it's under a solid wood roof. It shouldn't get much, if any, in there. I screwed an eye bolt into it on the side, made my cable to go on it. Um, seems to work out pretty good. They, they figured it out after about 10 minutes to refill it. Just unscrew the top, pour the feet in there. Uh, I don't know if it'll work for... I don't know yet. Uh, right now it's working absolutely perfectly, but it's the first day. Uh, they're eating out of it. They seem to be happy with it. And there's just stainless steel hooks that are screwed up into the bottom for each of those, but it makes it real easy to change the food and water, um, that kind of stuff. Let's get into a little bit about why this thing is uh, as heavy as it is. Uh, most of the materials that I used on this I already had. So some of these things uh, I would not have used them, certainly would not have used them if I didn't already have the materials, but since I had them, I was going to use them up. Let's get into the weight. Everything on this thing, as far as framing wise, is made out of pressure treated 2x4s, uh, with the exception of a couple of things. These corner posts, that are on the four corners of the of the coop. Those are four by six dimensional cedar. Uh, I had it, so I used it. Uh, that stuff's made to hold up roofs. Uh, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to rot. Um, the pull bar is a one inch. Let me move it up. The pull bar here is a one inch diameter dowel. I had it, so I used it. Um, let me spin you. All of the wood trim is one by four pressure treated. All of the siding and those top pieces, well, we'll get to the top in a second. All the siding is um, concrete impregnate, impregnated fiberboard. Um, extremely heavy, extremely durable, extremely strong. Um, of course, I put the uh, shingle roof on it, which added weight. Um, just a lot of weight in this unit. The top over here, I could not decide how I wanted to do this. I was going to do some different things with wire and framing and some other stuff. Um, we have a ton 
even in my backyard right now without even getting it up to the land. We have a ton of predators. Uh, we have raccoons by the ton. I can catch two or three a night and do it regularly. Uh, we have skunks, we have possums, we have red foxes that come and sun in our yard right over there. Um, we have uh, coyotes. Let me move this up just a little bit. You're probably not going to be able to see it real clear. But right behind that tree there, the ground drops off in our backyard and it goes down about 40 feet. At the bottom of that is a creek. That creek flows this way, goes through a bunch of turns and bends, and it all looks just like this. It's all woods. goes through there, and it goes down to a river. The river, of course, looks just like this, and it runs into parks, uh, uh, wildlife refuges, those kind of things. So at night, this becomes a highway. Uh, you can sit out here all night and listen to the animals going back and forth. From that, we often, I shouldn't say often, uh, from time to time, we get coyotes come up here looking for food in these people's backyards. Now, most people around here have put privacy fences across this back part to try to keep the wildlife out. I, of course, am not interested in keeping it out. Uh, I like it to come into my yard. Uh, I don't want them to eat my chickens, though. So, I had to overbuild this thing for the use here. I had to make this like Fort Knox. Um, and then once it's moved out to the land, uh, we're going to have less raccoons, we'll have less possums, we'll have, uh, I haven't seen a skunk out there, I'm sure they're out there. Uh, but what we will run into out there is there are some wild dogs, uh, and until I get those killed off, they're going to be there. More importantly than that, there are packs of coyotes out there. Uh, at least three different ones. Packs. Uh, so I had to make this thing so that when they're in here at night they're perfectly safe. With the concrete fiber board, 2 by 4 construction, uh, steel hasp on everything, I, I don't care if they get up on top of this deck here and start working at the wall. They're not getting into my chickens. Um, and with the way the system works on the bottom where, where the thing raises up, the ramp raises up, uh, there's a steel plate in there so that the the ramp raises up and this cable, uh, steel cable, keeps it pulled tight hard up against it. So they can't push it up, the steel plate's in the way, and they can't pull it down because the steel cable's holding it. Um, I cannot think of any other way to get this thing any stronger than it is unless I, I make one out of metal. Not going to happen, but that's the only way I can think of it. Um, anyway, um, these two chickens that I have, uh, they went back up inside the coop now. I don't think they like me walking around filming them right now. They're, they they just got here at like 8 o'clock last night. Um, they were given to Stephen for free. Uh, the the person that raised, raised them only wants roosters. You could figure out why. Uh, so he gave them to Stephen for free. Stephen had built a small chicken tractor in his backyard. And these were the experimental chickens. Uh, to see if anything could get into his coop. Uh, to see how the chickens moved around, how they reacted to it, um, those kind of things. Uh, his coop, he now has it the way he wants it. Uh, about the time, uh, just about exactly the time he got those chickens, I started building on this. Uh, last night, uh, they're going out of town, so it worked out good. He had ordered his real egg-laying chickens, hens. Uh, they're in, but they're too young. Uh, he's going out of town for a week on vacation with his family. So it was the perfect time to finish this up, get it moved back here. Now the experimental chickens are here. Uh, when I say experimental, they lay some eggs from what I'm told, four to six eggs a week. Not a lot, but that's okay. Um, the cruel, honest answer to it is, I don't care if these chickens get killed. Uh, I don't want them to. Uh, but if something if, if something finds a weakness in my coop, I want it to find it with these chickens rather than good bought egg laying chickens. So they have a good life right now. They had a good life at Stevens house. Um, so I'll probably keep them in here a month or two, maybe three months, see how things work out with them here. Uh, and then I'll get my own chick if it, every, once everything's either works out or I or, uh, improve what needs to be improved. Uh, then I'll get my own egg-laying chickens. We'll order them. 
and then I, once again being honest we will probably wind up eating these we'll probably have a dinner for us and Steven's family um, not a lot of oh I need to show you the wheels how the wheels work on this I'll be right back with you okay so here's the wheel system that I use because it's so heavy I, I had to think of a, a way to move it by myself um, I don't know that this is going to be the final way to do it. Well, we had a ton of rain and the ground's really soft and they're having some problems. Not rolling or holding the weight, but they, they sink. Um, so, here's the way it works right now. It's a very simple system. I've got a pivot point here and I've got a pivot point here, which I'm using as an axle. I rotate this up. I take this pin. Stick it in that hole right there. The coop is raised about three inches off the ground. I can do it to the other side too. Grab the bar and roll it just like it's balanced. This is the balance point of the coop right here. Right here is the balance point of the coop. So uh, it's balanced pretty well and I can roll it back and forward. I'm not going to do it right now just because the ground's muddy and it was a pain to get it here right now. Um, and then when it's in position, drop it and the coop's back on the ground. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if it's going to work out perfect or not. Uh, I do know that it is well built. Uh, it's extremely strong. Uh, it's heavy. Uh, that's the one big huge negative to it is that it's very, very heavy. Um, and like I said, I may have to change the way the wheels work on it so I can move it. Right now that works good. It worked perfect in my shop and it worked perfect on the driveway. It worked good through the garages. Once it got to the dirt, I think if the dirt was hard it would have worked just fine. But it had just, our ground soaked. I can push my foot into it right now. So those wheels had trouble with, you know, at least 400 pounds. Maybe some people are guessing up to 600 pounds of weight on it. Um, so I may have to change that around. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any ideas or comments, uh, I'm more than willing to listen. I am not a chicken expert. I am not a chicken coop expert. Uh, this took me two, maybe three months to build because I kept having to think and stop. How do I fix this? How do I do this? That kind of stuff. Uh, and this is what I came up with. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good time. Get out in the dirt and have some fun. Thanks.